we now move into what's maybe one of the more important concepts, and that is moving from an average velocity to an instantaneous velocity. We talked about in the previous video about the fact that if you had a runner running around, for instance, on a track, and they ran all the way around the circular track, if you'd closed your eyes from the time they left the start till they reached back to the finish, and then you opened your eyes and looked at them at the finish, you would believe that their average velocity was zero. This is correct. Their average velocity is zero. But that loses information. For instance, they did have a velocity. They were moving and changing their position vector during the time they were running. But you took such a large delta t that you didn't see this. What we want to do now is to shrink the time of which we make the measurement between the initial position and the final position. And we want to shrink that time down to as small as possible. Mathematically, we could say that that time goes to zero. In reality, in the real world, you can't do that. Any type of device, whether a camera or the human eye, takes a particular amount of time to make a measurement. So delta t, while it may be small, maybe it's a millionth of a second, it's not really zero. Only in mathematics can you take the limit where it goes to zero. Well, when you let this delta t go to zero, you get what's called the instantaneous velocity. This is, means the velocity the person moves at that instant. Now, because that's what we really want all the time, physicists, being a little bit lazy, generally leave out the word instantaneous. So when people say, what is the velocity of the car, they mean the instantaneous velocity. If they want the average velocity, they will specifically say, what is the car's average velocity? Okay. So for velocity, first thing is, what's its definition? Well, its definition is the time, oops, the time rate of change of the position vector. In calculus, when you say rate of change, that implies a derivative. I'll talk a little bit more about this for those who are not in a calculus-based course. They don't have to be able to do calculus, but explain what the word means. Time means it's the derivative with respect to time. That's what you're dividing by. You're dividing by delta t and letting delta t go to zero. The units and the symbol can be found as follows. The symbol for velocity is a V. With an arrow, we no longer put a V for average. So if you see V with an arrow over it, then that means velocity vector. And you can either make that with a full arrow or with the half arrow like I usually do. The formula, or more precisely the mathematical definition if you would, so you can put three bars implying definition means the limit as delta t goes to zero of the displacement divided by the change in time. So it looks just like the average velocity except we're taking delta t going to zero. In calculus, when you do this limit of these two changes, there's a special symbol. They change it to little d's, and that's called the derivative. For those in calculus class, you know how to take a derivative, or you're learning how to take derivatives. The units, again, right here, meters divided by seconds. So all velocities, average and instantaneous, have the same units. Sometimes, rather than having a function or being told it, you're given data in terms of a graph. This occurs in Logger Pro when we use video analysis to measure the location of an object. And if we do that, 
The velocity of an object at a specific point can be found from a position time graph in Logger Pro by finding the slope of the tangent line. And I will explain in a minute exactly what that means. And I will, in another video, go into more detail in looking at various types of graph. Because the velocity is defined in terms of the position vector, it depends on an observer's frame of reference. Again, it depends on the coordinate axis. So for instance, on planet Earth, I believe that if I'm sitting in my chair that I'm stationary. I believe the Earth is stationary because I've attached my reference frame to it. But a person in outer space would see me moving. So the velocity depends on what your coordinate axis is. Let me go back to this idea of the slope of a tangent line. I'm going to draw a position time graph here. So let me put up a coordinate axis. There's a coordinate axis. There's the X. And let's say there's the Y. And I collect some data. in Logger Pro and maybe that data looks like this. There's the position of a cart there and then it goes like this and it goes down like that. So uh, this is the X, I'm sorry, my fault. This is time in seconds and this is position in meters. And you want to find the velocity, for instance, of the object right here at this particular time. Now if you wanted to find the position, that's easy. You could just locate the value. Maybe that's at one meters. And this maybe is at two seconds. So the object is located at one meter two seconds, but I don't want the position. I want the velocity. How do I find that? Well, the way that you find that is that you find the slope of the tangent line. That is, you find, in this case, the slope of this line right here. So that slope gives you V. Now, what is a tangent line? Well, that's a little more complicated. So let's, to really understand a tangent line, we need to go back for a minute to the average velocity. The average velocity is found by finding the change in the position, that is the displacement. So let's say that we didn't take delta t to zero. We took, this was the initial position, and then some later time, say this time right here, the ball ends up at that location. So that's T2, and let's say this is T1. And to find the average velocity, I need to find the change in position over the change in time. Well, that's found. There's delta X, the change in the position, the displacement. And there's delta t. So the slope of that curve, slope of that chord, is the average velocity. What we've done in this limiting process is that we've moved that final point closer and closer and closer and closer till it's almost right on this point. And this chord, which goes between two points, eventually moves over until it becomes this tangent line. Now it's easy to find the slope of tangent lines when you have straight lines, because it's just the slope of the straight line. Here this might be, for instance, five meters per second. If you were looking for the slope right over here, that would be this slope. 
So if you're looking for the velocity at that point, the instantaneous velocity is zero. Here the instantaneous velocity was greater than zero. Here the slope of the line is negative, so the instantaneous velocity would be negative. That doesn't mean it's in the negative x location, it means it's moving back toward the origin. What about a more complicated graph? Let's try one more. Let's say you had a graph that looked like First put my coordinate system, there's x and t. Oops. So there's x and there's t. Now let's assume the graph looked more like this. How do we find, for instance, the tangent line to this location here? Well, we would do the same thing as we did before, kind of with this chord. We would start some location here, and we would move it in and in and in and in, and that chord would eventually move to be the tangent line. And that tangent line is a line that goes through that point and roughly touches it at just one place approximately something like that. Now is that exact? No, maybe I'm off a little bit. Maybe it's like this. But with a ruler at any point, let's say this point, I can draw a line. Oops, that's not a very good one. It touches it more. It crossed it. It doesn't cross the curve. It just touches it. Kind of like that. And I could use the ruler to find the rise of that line over the run, find the slope, and that would approximate the velocity for this point right here. And the slope of this line would approximate the velocity for that. Now in Logger Pro, it has a button called slope, and you can put it in any point and it will attempt to find you the slope of the curve. And in this case, that would be the velocity for a position time graph. Alright, that's everything about velocity.